Hello there, this is Dr. Mintz. This is a patient who was in a motor vehicle collision and sustained significant trauma. They were brought to the ER and were found to be hypotensive, not severely so, but moderately so. And I'm going to give you a chance to look this over and see what you can identify. Okay, there are several findings to be made here. Okay, there's the pelvis, and then we go up through the abdomen. And then you have the big organs, the liver, spleen, and pancreas, and both kidneys. Okay. The heart, mediastinal structures. Okay. So, let's cut to the chase. What's the biggest abnormality or most important that you think you see here? Well, the right kidney is not enhancing very well. It's not enhancing hardly at all. The left kidney is. What would cause that? Well, let's look and see. Is there a big hematoma or mass or anything around that right kidney? No. No, you get the adrenal gland on the right side and the adrenal gland on the left side. You don't see quite as well, but they both look normal. Uh, so, what would cause non-enhancement of a kidney in a trauma case? It would be a vascular injury, renal devascularization. And what can happen is that the renal artery on one side or another can just get yanked and pulled so hard it can snap and, and that can make it close off on both sides because the natural reaction of the artery is going to be to constrict in that situation after severe trauma. Or it can just get pulled to such an extent that the intima is pulled away from the inner lining of the artery. You have the intima that can then become an embolus or an obstructing um, tissue that can block blood flow to the renal artery. Okay, so here we have a renal artery injury related to trauma and we can see a lot of vessels here. Let's see if we can zoom in there a little bit. So here's the left renal vein that's coming over to the IVC. We don't see very good depiction of the IVC because it's compressed by hemorrhage. This is hemorrhage here. This is duodenum. This is part of the pancreas, but this is all hemorrhage here. This haziness in here is hemorrhage. Here's the aorta. Here again you see the inferior vena cava would be this partially enhancing area here. And it's partially enhancing because it's being compressed. It doesn't enhance normally. It's being compressed by the adjacent hematoma. Okay. Take a look, see if you see anything else of interest here. You see how everything looks hazy in here? That's blood. That's blood tracking around the inferior vena cava, around the aorta. All these retroperitoneal structures here are being affected by this. Left kidney looks fine. Now, where is the renal artery on each side? These are renal veins, and they're pretty easy to find because you know that this is the only arching vessel that's going to go from one kidney to the other, practically, or look like it, is the renal vein along with the inferior vena cava. So renal vein on the right is over here somewhere, smushed. Renal vein on the left is much better depicted, and this is what the normal renal vein would look like. Okay, so where's the renal arteries? Well, here's one right here. That's the right renal artery. See if you can follow that out toward the right kidney. You don't. It just This is the best view you get of it, and it appears to just end there. And that is the story. There's a renal artery injury from the trauma, and it tore through the artery, or maybe just avulsed the intimal lining and caused an occlusion, 
a dissection, a, a, an arterial dissection. Look here on the left. Let's see if we can see a nice artery. Okay, here's the left renal artery. And it kind of looks like maybe it's tapering off there, but no. If you look more closely, you'll see that it's continuing to the renal hilum. It's just tortuous, so you don't see it on one image going that whole distance. Okay, so it's here. This is left renal vein. This is left renal artery here. And that's coming in right into the aorta. Okay, so that's, those are other findings regarding this. Now, look at the aorta itself. You see this shape? See how it kind of has an oblong shape? That's not the normal shape of the aorta. The aorta is under pressure, 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 and so it's just rigidly round, or pretty much so. So as soon as you get any kind of distortion in that, that nice clean roundness of the aorta, and even here it looks a little flattened, some of that could be this haziness which is hemorrhage around it. But to me, that means there's probably been significant blood loss. And that's an important finding that a lot of people are not aware of. Look at right here. You see that? It looks like a football or an egg. That's the abdominal aorta going through the aortic hiatus, where it crosses from the thoracic cavity to the abdominal cavity. Look how irregular, how, well, how flattened it looks relatively flattened. So that is typical of blood loss. And even the heart, you know, this may be normal for this person, but it's pretty small, and sometimes a heart will actually get small if enough blood is lost. This is probably normal or low end of normal. Okay, so that's the story with that, and let's see if we can get into coronal anything interesting here. Okay, so here a nice depiction of the renal nephrogram on the left and the absence of the nephrogram on the right. So this is unenhanced kidney because the renal artery is not allowing the blood to get through. Okay. Other structures that we want to be paying attention to here? the thoracic structures of the mediastinum and here you have to always look through the thoracic aorta the pulmonary artery, the main pulmonary artery goes to the right main pulmonary artery and the left main pulmonary artery the trachea here branches into the right main stem bronchus and the left main stem bronchus here's the descending aorta here's the ascending aorta and you can follow the pulmonary arteries as we do in a pulmonary embolism study and see that this one is enhancing normally, uniformly, the right one, and the left one is too. This little air pocket here is the esophagus. Everything has significance. Everything you should be able to point to and say this is what this is. This is the azagous vein. The azagous vein courses up from the abdomen posteriorly and here you can see it. Here's the aorta and here's the azagous vein. Okay. Look at the lungs. Make sure there's not a laceration of the lung or a pneumothorax or pleural fluid. Lungs seem to have fared relatively well. Now if we look for solid organ injury besides the kidneys. You're thinking in terms of liver, spleen, and pancreas. Oh, we got something here. Look at this. Here's the spleen. Povrecito spleno. That's a, a phrase that Pablo Ross, the spleen expert of years ago, used to say, oh, povrecito spleno, meaning the poor little spleen. Nobody cares about the spleen. Nobody wants to study the spleen or give talks about the spleen. That's changed a little bit, but you can still feel a little sorrow for povrecito spleno. And here's the pancreas. And this can get compressed, too, if there's been a renal injury 
that affected the retroperitoneum. The pancreas is a retroperitoneal organ. And here you can see the pancreatic head, the body and tail. The tail always points off to the splenic hilum. Why? Because the, the tail of the pancreas is accompanied by the splenic vein, and the splenic vein has got to go to the splenic hilum, and so does the pancreatic tail, therefore. So we do have a little splenic injury there, though. This is this could be a cyst. I don't see anything around it. Yeah, yeah, it's probably a cyst. It looks smoothly marginated, but the thing is, is that splenic cysts are really very uncommon. So even though I don't see any fluid around it, I'd be a little suspicious of that. Okay, and that flattened aorta means get this guy filled with fluids as soon as possible. The liver is intact. You see the normal radiating branching patterns of the hepatic arteries and the portal venous system. The gallbladder here. Okay, here you can see the diaphragm of the, cr of the, the crus of the diaphragm. The right one is thickened from the hemorrhage from the injury to the adjacent right kidney. And we also have this big hematoma. So this, this hematoma back here looks like soft tissue, but in a trauma patient, you know, it's not going to be a tumor that is spread out like that. It doesn't have a mass-like appearance. And given this history, you know it's going to be a hematoma. And here you have the pelvis. Uh, let's see, we've got to look at that closely. Hmm. It looks like this is a little widened anteriorly, which is, and even here, this doesn't look quite situated there quite right. So I think there may be something of an open book type of injury to the sacroiliac joints. I'm not sure about that. Oh yeah, this makes it look more likely. So here you can see there's a fracture subluxation, or at least a fracture of the right acetabulum. And you have pubic symphyseal diastasis. That means the pubic symphysis has been spread apart and it's out of alignment. So that altogether points out that this is a valid observation, that this is SI joint, sacroiliac joint uh, diastasis. There's just a, it's an open book type of injury they call it because the pelvis looking at this projection should be kind of like this and it's been splayed. Splayed. Okay. And let's see, we'll just go to a sagittal image too. Make sure all the vertebra you don't want to miss a vertebral fracture because you're all cut up with soft injury, soft tissue injuries. So make sure you give this a good look too. Anyway, there you have it. A young male with history of MVC and he's got a renal vascular injury with devascularization of the right kidney, small amount of retroperitoneal hemorrhage, and some pelvic fractures along with possibly a cyst or contained laceration of the spleen and we've got this hematoma subcutaneous fat the hematoma in the subcutaneous fat here all right